Pugna is the most picked hero with one of the highest win rates currently. What makes this hero great is that it doesn't really require any special item to be useful in the game. Not only that, Pugna is great at taking control of the map by destroying towers with nether blast as well as sieging high ground. This hero heavily counters physical damage cores like Faceless Void, Swan, and Templar Assassin with Decrypify and spell casting heroes like Necrophos with Nether Ward. That's not even all. Pagna can heal his allies again and again with Life Train and always keep them active on the map. There are different variations for Pagna's tiring items. Against heroes that like to spam spells in the lane, start with Tangos, a Blood Grenade for HP and potential enemy punishment, a Magic Stick to counter spell spam, two branches for stats, Fairy Fire or Mango, wherever you like, and a Sentry to block the small camp. In other builds, you can just replace the Magic Stick with a Circlet. Or, you can avoid both the circlet and magic stick and start with two mangoes to spam your blast in the lane and get the magic stick after the bounty runes. Pagna's laning phase is very strong. He wins trades against almost every hero because of his base movement speed and long attack range which helps him to position himself better in the lane. Your job in the laning stage is to secure the range creep with your blast and try to hit enemy heroes with it too. If you want to know more about how you can position yourself in the lane and harass the enemy, I've linked the video in top right, you can check it out. If you're playing against heroes that like to cast spells in the lane, in that case you can get nether ward on level 2 and go aggressive on them. Otherwise, you can go decrypify on level 2 if you're playing against a hero like Tusker or Laundred type of heroes that rely on physical damage in the lane. Your priority in the laning should be to get arcane boots and start spamming your blast on tier 1 so you can enable your core to farm the enemy's jungle. With arcane boots, Pugna is free to rotate anywhere on the map and pressure the enemy tower. The easiest way to play is that once you have taken your lane's tower, you just move to the middle lane, place a nether ward and start taking the middle tower. It is really hard to defend towers into Pugna with a nether ward placed in the area. Pugna's skill build is pretty straightforward. In the laning phase, your skill build should be getting nether blast on level 1 followed by the decrypify or nether ward on level 2 that depends on the type of lane you are up against. After that you just max your nether blast till level 7 and next up you max decrypify. Getting more levels in Decrypify reduces the cooldown and increases the cast range of the spell. It also improves the ally heal amplification, enemies increased magic damage and slow percentage so therefore getting more levels in Decrypify is always the way to go. It also allows you to cast the spell from distance which helps you maintaining a good position in fight. You can skip that level 10 talent as Pagna's spells are better than the talent. Pagna can play super active on the map because of his movement speed and the amount of damage it can deal with his spells. You can disassemble your arcane boots into aether lens and tranquil boots which helps you with the team fight positioning, healing your allies and taking towers with blast. After the laning stage, Pagna has 3 options based on the situation. If you have heroes that excel in pushing, you can stick around them and help them in taking control of the map by destroying towers, heroes like Lycan and Chen. If you have a support or mid hero that likes to run down enemy heroes on map like primal beast mid or gyro support, you can just ward the enemy jungle, run around the map and look for kills. If your team is behind in terms of net worth and you cannot really fight, in that case you should start pushing a lane and pressure the tower by yourself. When you are pushing a lane, make sure to stay hidden in the trees and don't auto attack the creep wave as it will reveal your position. Just spam your blast and you're good. This will force enemy heroes to react to your play and it will open up the map for your team to farm. In most cases, the enemy team doesn't really respond to the push properly and they end up in a bad position where they can be punished. For example, one or two heroes TP back to defend leaving three heroes open in your area, which gives your team a chance to take a fight. Positioning is very crucial for ideal team fights. As a Pagna, you don't wanna show yourself on the map. Doing so will allow the enemy team to jump on you and kill you first. Just place another ward in the fighting area and look for saving your allies. If a team has a Pagna and he's not showing on map, it is really hard to jump the other heroes as Pagna can always save them. By staying out of sight in team fights and using Decrypify, you can save your teammates against heroes like Faceless Void during Chronosphere, which can completely change the outcome of the fight. Positioning for safe life drain channels is crucial for sustained impact. In essence, where you position yourself as a Pugna support significantly influences the outcome of the team fights, making it a key aspect to master. Pugna's itemization is kind of same in every game. You start with Aether Lens and Tranquil Boots, after that you switch between Glimmer Cape and Force Stuff wherever you need first. 
if you're playing against high magic damage heroes like Lina, Zeus or Necro, you can get a Glimmer Cape first. Four Staff helps you and your teammates in positioning which is a key aspect. If the enemy team has heroes that like to jump, in that case you can get a 4 staff before a glimmer. After that you just itemize according to what your team really needs. If your team lacks a cash, you can get a hex. Lotus Orb is a pretty good item if enemy team has a lot of single target spells. You can also get an Aeon disc if the enemy team is smart and they are starting the fights on you. But in most cases if you position yourself in trees, you are less likely to be targeted. Decrypify has many mechanics that most people still don't know. Decrypify can be cast while channeling which means even if you are using life drain, you can still use Decrypify on any hero within the spell range and it will not cancel the life drain. You can also use teleport and cast Decrypify whether on your hero or the enemy hero during the effect of TP. Decrypify increases the heal amplification of the ally hero so if you want a life drain to heal your teammates, you can use Decrypify on them so they can heal faster and you don't lose much HP. The Creepify only increases the magic damage if it is used on enemy heroes. If you use it on allies, they will not take extra magic damage, so don't hesitate to decreepify your allies against magic damage heroes. You can also use decreepify on other wards so the enemy team cannot hit it. Pugna's shard is pretty strong. It increases the cast range of nether ward and it allows you to use life drain on nether ward which allows you to drain every hero or illusion within 700 range of the nether ward. And if you get an Aether Lens, the range increases even if you use Life Drain on Nether World. Really strong ability especially against Illusion based heroes like Naga, PL, Luna, TB as Life Drain clears the Illusions in 1 second and your team can easily target the real hero. Pugna's talent choices typically involve skipping level 10 talent and going for the spells because the spells are far better than the first talent. At level 15 plus 3 Nether World because it can make it hard for the enemy team to destroy it during a fight. On level 16, you can get the first talent based on whatever you like. I personally like to get plus 200 health, but I have seen some pro players going for a plus 20 movement speed as well. At level 20, if the enemy team has a hard physical based lineup where two or more than two heroes rely on physical damage, then you can get a plus one decrease of our duration. Otherwise, you can choose life drain talent as well. Finally, at level 25, I like to get nether blast damage as it helps in taking buildings and clearing waves. If you're interested in private coaching, you can join my discord linked in description. Do let me know if you have any feedback, otherwise have a nice day and good luck with your games.